Thank you for joining us here at our true crime show, Killer Bites. Today we will be talking about the badass that is Susan Kuhnhausen. How many of you hate your ex so much that you wish they would just disappear? Now, how many of you would go as far as to kill them? I better not see any hands. Well, in today's case, we're talking about Susan Kuhnhausen, the woman who fought off the hitman her husband hired to slay her. Sounds pretty juicy, huh? Let's get into it, cool cats. Susan grew up in a home with divorced parents, and it wasn't uncommon for her to move around frequently. She went from Colorado to Arizona to California to Nevada. She was moving all over the freaking place. She never knew what it was like to see a healthy relationship work out. She had a bunch of different step parents and lived in a lot of different homes. In the 80s, Susan made the move to Oregon and fell in love with Portland. She was a regular at a local comedy club and was known to sit super close to the stage to watch the comics. I love that she was so into comedy, but something about sitting front row at a comedy show scares me. You are a direct target for any roast coming from a professional comedian. If you sit in the front row, I salute you and your bravery. But since Susan hadn't seen super healthy relationships growing up, she was single and a little timid about jumping into a relationship. So in 1988, her mom put out an ad in the newspaper on Susan's behalf. It mentioned that she was a single 33-year-old woman who was overweight, but not over life. She wanted someone who cared about more than just looks or how skinny you were. She wanted someone she could have good conversations with and someone to make her laugh. Isn't that what we all want? Also, something about taking out a dating ad in the paper is kind of iconic. It's giving me Newsies vibes and I support it. A little bit of time passed and a man named Mike replied to the newspaper ad. It freaking worked, y'all. Mike told Susan that he was a combat veteran who served in the Vietnam War. After no more than a year of dating, the two got married. They weren't wasting any time. But shortly after they tied the knot, Mike's true colors started to show. He wasn't anything like Susan had initially thought. Susan found military records of Mike's time in Vietnam, but he wasn't in combat. Instead, he was listed as a switchboard operator. So he wasn't wholly lying, but he wasn't exactly out there on the front lines. Mike got a job at an adult video store as a janitor, and it was clear that he was unhappy in his life. Sadly, he took his sadness and tried to rip any joy from Susan. He would talk about how much life sucked all the time and how nothing would ever get better. He was incredibly controlling and abusive to her. If he wasn't getting on her case about spending money, no matter how little, he would scream at her any time she wanted to hang out with her friends. She just wants some form of happiness, dude. Let her live. Susan was trapped in this marriage where no matter what she did, she would be scrutinized and yelled at. She had to walk on eggshells just to live her life. It sounds terrifying. And you would think maybe Mike lives a super strict lifestyle and wants to save money? Yeah, that would make sense if he wasn't addicted to Diet Coke and chain smoking. He wasted money all the time. It wasn't about the money. It was about controlling his wife and criticizing her actions until she broke. Well, after 17 years of marriage, Susan had finally had enough. And I don't freaking blame her one bit. If you are in an abusive relationship, physically, emotionally, whatever, I know how hard it can be to leave your situation, but just know it's incredibly brave for you to take those steps. In September of 2005, Susan told Mike to get his sorry bud out of her house. On the 6th, Susan visited the salon to get her hair done after finishing up her shift. She worked as a nurse in the emergency room at the same hospital for 30 years. After her hair appointment, she drove home to her house in Southeast Portland. When she walked up to the home, she noticed that the curtains to her house were closed. She always made sure to open them before leaving for work. She didn't think about it for too long though and went inside. She found a note from Mike saying that he had gone out. He had been having trouble sleeping and was gonna relax on the beach for a couple of days. Susan hadn't changed the locks or the code to the alarm after they had split up, so that's how he was able to leave the note. As she went towards her bedroom, she noticed that it was unusually dark. She always left the curtains open during the day to let the sun in, but this time, something didn't feel right. 
All of a sudden, a man jumped out from behind the curtains and ran at Susan. He was wearing yellow rubber gloves, a baseball hat, khaki pants, and a striped shirt. He held a claw hammer in his hand. Really, dude? Khaki pants? You wore dockers to slay someone? That's a crime within itself. Here's the thing. Susan might look unsuspecting, but having been a nurse for over 30 years, she knew a thing or two about self-defense. And at that moment, Susan said she was confident that whoever that man was, he was there to end her life. I can't even imagine the adrenaline that must have kicked into her body. The intruder got a hit to Susan's head, but she bit down hard through his skin. She wanted people to know that she had fought like hell for her life. She wasn't going down without a fight. And this woman worked in the ER, so she had seen some stuff, okay? She dealt with people going through withdrawals and cracked open people's chests for heart surgery. She wasn't a stranger to some intense medical sites. But Susan was a tiny woman coming in at around 5'4", a whole five inches shorter than the crazy person attacking her. But this didn't stop her. And in fact, she outweighed him, giving her an interesting advantage. The struggle went on for about 15 minutes, and the attacker even said, you're strong, to Susan at one point. Okay, no, 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 you don't come into my house, attack me with a claw hammer, and then try to compliment me on my athletic ability? Pick a side, dude. Susan screamed back at the guy, asking who sent him, but with no answer, she got him into a chokehold. She squeezed the crap out of his neck, but offered to call him an ambulance if he piped up and said who hired him. The guy still wouldn't speak, so Susan kept tightening her grip until he turned purple and blue. This freaked her out though, because, hello, she wasn't expecting to slay a guy when she got home from the salon. So Susan let go and booked it out of there, but the attacker caught up to her, trapped her in a narrow hallway, and punched her so hard it split her lip open and she fell to the ground. Susan dragged him right down with her though and started biting the crap out of him. She was trying to leave any possible DNA evidence that could link her body with this attacker. She managed to get on top of the guy and started choking him out again. He still wouldn't tell who sent him in the first place, and she kept squeezing until this time he stopped breathing. Terrified, Susan ran to her neighbor's house and called the police immediately. She had no idea if the man was dead or not, but she wasn't sticking around to find out, you know? Dispatchers asked the neighbor if Susan had any beef with her ex-husband, and right away the pieces started to fall into place. When police arrived, they identified the attacker's body as Edward Haffey, a 59-year-old veteran. He worked with Mike at the adult video store. Edward did have a criminal past, which we'll get into later, but that didn't stop him from going along with the plan. The autopsy report showed an almost lethal dose of cocaine in his system the night he tried to kill Susan. In his backpack were his diabetes pills, a bottle of chocolate syrup, and his daily planner. September 6th, don't forget the claw hammer. But actually though, on the date of the attack, Mike Kuhnhausen's phone number was found scribbled into Edward's planner with a note next to it that read, call Mike, get letter. Very detailed notes you got there, Edward. As the police dug deeper into Edward's criminal history, they found that he had done time in prison for conspiracy to slay his own ex-girlfriend. A crime which he pled guilty for, mind you. Well, when the media got a hold of this, they really ran with it. A local man hires a hitman to execute his wife, but the wife executes the hitman? Now that is a news story. At this point, Mike was feeling like he was out of good options. Can't a guy plot his wife's demise in peace anymore? So he decided his next best move was to take his own life. He wrote a farewell note and bought a Taurus 357 Magnum. If you know anything about firearms, feel free to leave a comment below letting me know if that is a good choice for a weapon or not. To be honest, you could put any combination of letters and numbers together, and I'd think it was a high-tech piece of machinery. So Mike dropped off his note at his father's house and ran away. Luckily, he was found before he could make any rash decisions. On September 13th, the cops found Mike in the parking garage of a Kaiser Permanente. He claimed that he had nothing left to live for and was trying to check himself in. 
Mike was put on a brief psychiatric hold, but not even a full 12 hours later, he was arrested because of his conspiracy to commit murder. Things always seem to creep up and bite you in the butt in these stories, huh? Susan ended up finally filing for divorce, and she now had a pretty good idea if she wasn't sure about how the marriage was working out before. She said that if she wanted Mike lifeless, she would at least have the balls to do it herself. And I really respect her badass energy. I mean, she's not wrong. If you want something done, you better do it yourself. But Mike was a chicken, and he wasn't gonna get his hands dirty if he didn't have to. Just weeks before the attack, Mike had lost his job. Susan had kicked him out of the house because she had chosen to get away from this sad sack, and here he was trying to get in on that life insurance policy. But he was no longer listed as a beneficiary to her life insurance policy. Rats. Well, what the heck are we supposed to do now? Even though Mike couldn't get in on that sweet, sweet life insurance money, he wasn't giving up so easily. The next best thing, he wanted the house. In the event of Susan's demise, that lovely piece of real estate would go to Mike Kuhnhausen. Luckily for him, the house was paid off in full and was worth over $300,000. Seems like a pretty sweet backup deal to me. He wasn't getting off the hook so quickly though. The investigator's job is to dig up dirt on you. Even if you think your story is bulletproof, they are there to poke holes in your story. They brought up Mike's relationship with Edward. They knew each other from the adult video store, and he denied, denied, denied. Come on, man. Just because I worked with the guy who tried to kill my wife doesn't mean I'm involved. Well, Mikey, that's exactly what that means. On the day of the attack, the security alarm had been disarmed. The only people who knew the code to the house were Susan and Mike. While Susan was at work, Mike went over to the house and shut off the alarm system. This is where he let Edward into the home for him to hide until Susan returned. If you're like me, you probably want to know how much money this Edward Happy guy was going to get for doing all of this. A measly $5,000 was all Mike could offer up. When Edward said no, he pushed the number for $50,000, which is a pretty big jump if you ask me. With that, Edward agreed and the plan was set. However, a witness spotted the two men in the parking lot of an Applebee's talking. They stood out because their faces had been in the news just days before. So after all of this, the evidence, the relationship to the hitman, and the fact that witnesses saw the two men hanging out together, there wasn't much more Mike could claim. In 2007, Michael Kuhnhausen pled guilty for his involvement with the hitman for hire plot. Despite all this drama, he only received seven years in prison. Imagine being Susan in this scenario. How do you even function from this point forward? She was terrified that once Mike was released from prison, he would come after her again. She lived in constant fear that her life was in danger. Thankfully, Mike passed away in prison before he even had the chance to hurt Susan again. He was battling cancer, and eventually, he lost his battle at 92 years old. Susan spent a lot of time at the range, and I totally get it considering what she went through. She wanted to make sure that she was protected from that point forward. Even until his last day, Mike Kuhnhausen never took any responsibility for his involvement. He was really out there trying to say he was the victim. The nerve of some people, man. You gotta wonder. So how did Susan deal with all of this for the rest of her life? Well, Susan is a fighter and a total badass lady. She went on to share her story with the hopes that it could help others in abusive relationships. Susan decided that she wanted to help other victims and advocate for them. It can be scary to leave a relationship like that. You never know how your significant other will react and if they would go to these kinds of extremes. She was a crucial part of developing Case Companion, a website that answers all of the legal questions victims might have before going forward with their cases and helps track documents, court dates, etc. But Susan didn't feel totally relieved after all of this chaos. She still had a lot of trauma to work through. 
She claimed that the worst part of all of this was that she had to slay someone to stay alive. Even after everything she went through, Susan found compassion for Edward Happy, saying that he probably had family and friends who loved him and was sorry for their loss. Can you believe it? This woman truly has a heart of gold. I don't know how she managed to keep such a positive, active outlook through such dark times. And on a total side note, all of this started with a newspaper ad looking for love. She wanted to find someone who genuinely liked her, despite her appearance, which she looks fire and good for her. Susan later changed her last name to Walters because she wasn't about to walk around with Michael's stupid name attached to her. At the end of the day, this is a story about fighting like hell and never giving up. While Susan didn't want to end a life, she wanted to save herself and did what needed to be done. She's a rock star and is using her story to help others. That's all I have for you all today. How do you feel about this case? I just don't think I'll ever understand people like Michael. And that's okay with me. If you're gonna go as far as to execute your ex-wife, maybe do it yourself to make sure the job is done right. See y'all, this is what happens when one person does more work for the group project. Things inevitably get messed up. You know the old saying, too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, we'll see you next time.